Hi guys, good afternoon and welcome to Your Stocks. I'm Pavitra Parekh and the market is really not looking good today, although there has been a teeny bit of a recovery. So right now we're around 110 points in the red. So like you can see a little bit of, you know, a move from the lows. Uh, above the 18,500 mark, but it is a down day, no two ways about that, 110 points gone over there, like I mentioned, bulk of the pain coming through in the metals and in the banking stocks, right, so take a look at the Nifty Bank, it's down 540 points, a tad bit of a recovery there as well, but you know, 540 points is of course uh, looking quite weak across the board. What is holding up today, you have a Bharti Airtel, which is the top gainer. A lot of the tech names have moved to the high point of the day, even in this very weak looking market. So take a look at something like a Tech Mahindra, HCL Tech, all at the high point of the day. And you have some of the pharma names, the likes of Sun, Divis, all holding up. Uh, uh, the broader markets are a lot better today. So that is a key point to note that absolutely flat on the mid cap index, small cap index also faring a lot better. The advanced decline is negative, but you know, not too bad over there as well. So around one, one is to one almost over there. That is the shape of the market right now. Remember, this does come to us amid, you know, a lot of pressure that we're seeing in the Asian markets as well. So like we've been mentioning, Hong Kong is down 2.5%. The Nikkei market's down a percent and a half. So in that context, we are seeing this weakness play out in India as well. We will keep talking about the markets, but we have lots of queries that have come through. So let me invite our guests on the show today. We have Rajat joining us from rajatbose.com as well as Sharad Avasti of Smith's, uh, Smith's Rajat as well as Sharad. Thank you for joining us and taking out the time as always. Lot of queries which have come through and let's get to them straight away then. We have Gitika Jain who writes in from New Delhi. She says she has 15 shares of Yes Bank which she bought at 2000. Given the Q4 FI23 earnings, which came in above estimates, she wants to know whether she can continue to hold her uh, you know, shares over here or what she should do on this front. So on Yes Bank, that is the query right now. Okay, I think uh, we might be flashing something wrong here. Okay, it's on JK Cement. I apologize. I think uh, there's something wrong with uh, that, but we'll just try to fix that graphic. She has 15 shares of JK Cement bought at 2000 and given the Q4 FI23 earnings, she wants to know whether she should continue to hold or sell uh, these stocks. So, uh, Sharad, let me come to you first on this. JK Cement saw 5% bounce yesterday. You know, we were talking to the management as well. They are saying that they're going to beat the industry by 7 to 8%, clock in around 15% uh, in terms of growth for FI24. Do you think that in that context, you should keep holding on to this? Uh, yeah, in terms of performance, you cannot doubt JK Simmons. Uh, the capacity expansion that they've recently concluded, uh, which is around, what, uh, 4 or 5 MTPA, that should add to this 15 base, uh, by pace of 15 MTPA. Uh, they have a leadership position in the white cement or wall putty, as we generally call it. Uh, margins have been good for them throughout. Uh, they have one of the best EBITDA pattern in the industry. And uh, the CapEx, in addition to uh, what has been completed, uh, they have another 4-5 MTPA to be completed over the next one year and a half. So next two, three years earnings growth momentum should be very strong for the company. Uh, the only thing that is not going in its favor is the valuation at which it is trading right now. So I think uh, trading at somewhere around 200 per, uh, per ton in terms of EV uh, replacement cost. So uh, that I think uh, is uh, fully pricing everything on the upside. So I think it's better that you uh, book your uh, profits at these levels and exit. Okay, book profits at these levels and he's already made so much money, right, on this one. It's above 3,200. He bought at 2,000. Rajat, is that your call as well, that you should book profits on this or would you advise holding on for a little bit longer? Well, the latter. I would say that uh, if uh, she stays for a little longer, probably higher prices could be there because... Uh, this stock actually on the weekly chart, what I see is that up to 2022, it went up to something like 3600 and after that there was a correction where it tested its 200 day exponential moving average around say 2300 kind of levels and after that currently it is a ruling at around say 3200. Chances are that you might see 3500, 3600 kind of levels. At that point of time, uh, the investor can decide whether to go out, uh, get out of it, booking profits or to continue with it. Technically, it looks pretty okay. 
Okay, so that is the complete technical and fundamental perspective on JK Cement. I hope that helps. But with that, let's move on to our next query. This comes in from Raj Shekhar, who writes in from Bengaluru. He holds 100 shares of CoForge at 4200, also has 180 shares of Emphasis, which he bought at 1950. He's saying he's a long-term investor, so the time duration is not really a problem, and he wants to know the prospects of both of these investments. Sharath, he is making money on both of these investments, right? Uh, not, you know, he, not too much, but it is done pretty well for him and this entire Q4 season we did see a lot of these mid cap IT names do quite well do you think that this is a space that you would be excited by and these names in specific as well yeah, yeah I think the space uh, should be exciting uh, the problem with the larger deals is more prone actually because if you look at uh, most of the large cap IT companies barring Infosys I believe uh, most of the others have much uh, lesser new client uh, large new client wins compared to the last quarter so there the slowdown is evident. <clears throat> but these smaller companies that have created a niche for themselves in certain product aspects and when the cost cuts are mostly concentrating on uh, the type of costs that the companies incur on the IT side where uh, the revenue accretion would be faster or the results would be faster in terms of cost optimization. So these smaller firms or uh, not the particularly lead firms like an Infosys, DCS or Wipro, I think these firms have a lot of potential in terms of targeting those specific requirements and the smaller deal wins that they do, they could substantially aid. Uh, even in case of CoForge, I think, <coughs> sorry, uh, growth should be very good for the next two, three years. Uh, CoForge usually trades at a premium. They have grown at a very decent rate over the last three, four years. Uh, even currently, I think uh, the AI-based digital assistant and everything that they are doing, that should do very well. Machine learning is an aspect which should do very well. So we are expecting for CoForge, uh, the bottom line CAGR to be somewhere around 18, 20% over the next uh, two, two and a half years. And considering that, I think it should easily trade at somewhere around 30 times. So 6,000 would be the target on CoForge. Uh, for emphasis, again, uh, they are more on the... Uh, mortgage side of the business which has seen some uh, problems in the US recently but with the interest rate cycle more or less confirmed to be peaking and gradually we would see a reversal happening there so the expansion on business side there could be very fast uh, emphasis has done some acquisitions in the recent past uh, which are particularly into areas which improve the operational efficiencies or cost optimization of projects like uh, so that should uh, blink probably was the company that they have invested into and that should help the promoter background is very strong and uh, even if they go for an inorganic acquisition which they have indirectly hinted at I think that could be another trigger for the stock for emphasis I think uh, the top bottom line CAGR should be a bit sedate around 10-12% uh, the inorganic growth rate, which is through an acquisition, if they do, that would be an additional trigger. So 25 times forward multiples, I think 2750 would be the fair value for emphasis. Okay, got that. So that is on emphasis and co-forge. Rajat, coming to you on this, uh, how do you look at these? Because, you know, some of these stocks, the likes of co-forge are up 9% in one month. Do you think that this up move is likely to continue right now? And then what is the kind of target we can expect on both of these? Well, CoForge actually is completing its correction and uh, uh, it has uh, moved up earlier in up to 2022 to about 6,000 kind of levels and after that there had been a fall to something like 3,300, 3,400 and then it was in a range bound situation and now it is uh, around 4,400 and what I see is that it is actually signaling there is a possibility that CoForge might get out of the Bollinger Band and move up. Uh, uh, whether it will retest 6,000 or not, that I'm not so sure. But only thing that uh, shows uh, that it is actually going to go up. Maybe 5,000, 5,500. There would be some supply after that. Then it will definitely go towards 6,000. So CoForge is definitely a hold. Even one can add, but emphasis. I would say that that almost vertical run and then a similar fall emphasis requires a lot of consolidation accumulation uh, after that it would move so emphasis no no but go for gs one can even add here 
Okay, that is the complete call on both of these stocks. Uh, the next query coming in is from Pavan, who writes to us from New Delhi. He says he has 50 shares of Root Mobile at 11.22, and he also has 250 shares of Central Depository Services, that's CDSL, at 1,044. So he wants to know what he should do on both of these. He is making some losses on CDSL, but uh, you know, on uh, on Root Mobile, he is uh, definitely making some money. Rajat, coming to you on both of these, Root Mobile is up 10% in one month, CDSL is up 5% today. Uh, what's going on with these and would you suggest holding both of these names? See, CDSL, uh, again, the story has been, I mean, you will see similar kind of stories uh, uh, in many sectors, many stocks, because from the COVID low to say uh, to end of uh, 2021 or somewhere around 2022, they actually picked out and after that a prolonged correction. And that kind of thing is happening in CDSL. CDSL has already retraced by about 61.8% of this COVID low to about 2021 high. And after that, it is uh, still in a range bound situation. Today it has moved up fine, but then if you are a long-term investor, then definitely this is a good time to buy CDSL. And if one is already holding, then should carry on because unless the recent low, which was around, say, I think uh, 750 or so, uh, if that is taken out, then there would be further problems. Otherwise, CDSL can move up from here. And Root Mobile, I would say that that's a very good stock. I mean, good stock in the sense that it has completed its base formation. It has uh, seen, uh, from a technical point of view, it has seen 20-week, um, uh, nine-week moving average is crossing the 50-week moving average. 20-week moving average has already been crossed. And uh, the base formation is uh, already there for about a year or so. Root Mobile is a good buy if uh, that person has, is already holding, I would suggest go for averaging. Anybody uh, listening to this program uh, and uh, accepts technicals as a good indicator, then Root Mobile is a buy at current levels. Okay, Root Mobile is a buy at current levels. Let's ask Sharad if he agrees on this one as well. Sharad, you know, I remember when uh, Root Mobile came out with its earnings, it of course did very well. It managed to beat its own earnings, uh, you know, projection, which it had said revenue growth would be 70%. It came out with almost 80%. Even going forward, they're guiding for very strong growth. So do you agree with Raja? This is one to hold? Yeah, I think uh, for a change, I agree on both the views that Rajat carries. Uh, so, uh, Root Mobile, I think uh, the CPI space uh, as a space uh, should grow at a very, very decent rate over the next four or five years. Uh, the broader expectation is that till 2027, we would have around 20% CAGR for the sector as a whole. Uh, Root being primarily on the messaging side and 98% uh, of the revenues coming from that. And I think they would also continue to grow at a handsome rate. Uh, they are themselves guiding for uh, roughly doubling their revenues over the next uh, four to five years. And uh, that should lead to very healthy accretion in the bottom line as well. So we are expecting over the next two years, your uh, top line CAGR to be at around 15, 20%. But the bottom line CAGR should be much stronger at 25, 30%. Uh, FY25, we are expecting the earnings to be somewhere around 70, 71 rupees. Uh, 30 kind of multiple should be easily available for a company growing at that rate. Even for FY26, the expectations are very robust. Uh, EPS of somewhere around 100 rupees. So I think to start with, you can expect a target of 2100 over the next 18 to 24 months. And uh, for CDSL, I think uh, they uh, are the largest uh, depository player. They have a decent uh, revenue size that should keep growing at 10, 11% kind of uh, top line growth. Uh, the only trigger that I see for CDSL to come in is from the new businesses that they are doing, whether it is from the insurance repository or say from uh, the IFSC collaboration for commodities or developing a, a blockchain based corporate bond market uh, instrument or something like that. Uh, these are very big opportunities that can obviously catapult the growth rates and the top line levels to, to a different level, specifically the bond and commodity thing because the markets are very big. Uh, in terms of valuation, if you don't consider these two, three positives that can happen, whether the insurance repository or the commodity side, uh, then it uh, looks like fully valued. Our valuation comes to somewhere around 950,000 on the stock. 
at around 30 x f 524 expected f 25 expected earnings so not much upside i think cdsl only if you want to hold you have to hold for these unexpected gains in the long term from these three four new businesses that they are doing because the existing business will continue to grow at 5 8 percent so if you are not a very long term investor i think cdsl does not make sense in these valuations while root is an excellent bet uh, for the medium to long term or as well as for the very long term Okay, that is very helpful on both of these stocks, CDSL as well as Root Mobile. But with that, we're going to get into a short break. So, Sharad as well as Rajat, I request you to stay on because we have lots more queries that have come through, which we're going to take up on the other side. But as we get into that break, here's a quick programming note for you as well. Future Female Forward is headed to Hyderabad. So, catch industry leaders, share valuable insights in creating an equitable workplace today at 5 p.m. right here on CNBC TV18. Dosa, cheese, dosa, masala, dosa, paper, sada, dosa, roti, butter, roti, butter naan, kulcha, veg, adi, veg, kale, veg, kale, steam rice, jeera rice, fried rice. Hmm. Bhaiya, or koi option? Anna! They shouldn't be copying me, you know. Uh, you know that. Choose Nuvama. We only do what's right for you and your money. Nuvama. Let's do it right. Welcome back. You're still tuned into your stocks and we still have Rajat Bose and Sharad Devasti with us to answer all of your stock related queries. So let's get to a few more of them. Mahandesh writes to us from Pune. He says he has 200 shares of Chambal fertilizers, which he bought at 336. So seeing a loss over there. He also has 137 shares of Lakshmi Organics, which he bought at 270. He's uh, definitely seeing losses on both of these Lakshmi Organic currently around 250. He says he's a medium term investor and wants to know whether he should hold or sell both of these stocks. Uh, Rajat, let me come to you first on both uh, Chambal as well as Lakshmi. You know, they have both been trending lower for a while now, right? I mean, even if I look at a one-year chart, they're both down between 20 to 30 percent. Do you think things are likely to turn anytime soon from a medium-term perspective? Would it make sense to hold on? First, a skyscraper like climb. You are on a wind uh, in 2021, you uh, as if boarded an elevator for Buds Khalifa. And from there, a steady downswing. And that downswing is continuing in Lakshmi Organics. The only technical advice that can be given is just exit the stock because it's uh, short term, medium term, long term, all trends are down and the, the downtrend is alive and kicking. So that's my view on Lakshmi Organics. Regarding uh, the other stock, Chambal Fertilizer, I would say that definitely one should hold with a uh, stop below 239 on weekly closing price basis. Now it is testing its 200 day, uh, 200 week exponential moving average and it is consolidating, absorbing supplies. Chances are that you would see uh, some kind of an upsurge here. So here I would not suggest booking losses. Here you wait. Uh, uh, actually, I'm expecting levels of around 300 when the investor can think of whatever he or she needs to do. Okay, levels of 300. Unfortunately, the buy price is well above that. Uh, so closer to 340 is where the buy price is at. But uh, your point is taken that maybe you can stay in Chambal for a little bit longer, but Lakshmi is an exit. Sharad, what do you think? I mean, like Rajat was pointing out, this is a stock that saw, you know, rapid rise. And now I think for over a year, it's been, you know, in that, in that downtrend. We haven't seen any recovery as well. Plus the buy price is quite high on this one. Yeah, so I think uh, Lakshmi Organic long term... <clears throat> I'm very bullish on the stock. Uh, short term immediate, yeah, you might not see much of an impact. Uh, most of the capex that they have done should yield results in the second half of the current year. And uh, I think Q1, Q2, you might not see much of an impact. But Q3 onwards, there could be some substantial re-rating. Uh, the type of products they're into, they have a leadership position and uh, they are changing the product mix also with the fluorination plant coming on. I think these are complex chemical products, speciality intermediate. So gradually uh, they do take time to ramp up. 
and uh, Lakshmi has been a bit behind on the curve for the last few years, actually last one, one and a half years. So that's why you have seen the correction in the prices and the valuations exactly weren't uh, very uh, attractive either. But uh, I think if you're a long-term investor, this could be a very good story to hold on. Uh, growth in terms of earnings could be very strong. Uh, margins could easily ramp up from around 10% currently to around 15-16% over the next 2-3 years. So if you're a long-term investor, I think it could be a very good story. We are expecting a top-line CAGR over the next two years of 15-17%. Uh, bottom line could be much smarter at 50-60%. So 12-13 would be kind of EPS. And beyond that, as this 200 crore capex that they have done and starts kicking in, I think there is a possibility that you could in the long term look at somewhere around 400 on the stock. But most of the short term improvement you would see in the second half. So if you are a long term investor, hold for targets of somewhere around 400, 450 to start with. Uh, and uh, in the short term, I think if you can hold beyond six months, that would be the ideal time to look at the benefits starting to roll into the numbers and hence the prices as well. Uh, Chambal, I think. Uh, largely a urea based fertilizer maker expect normal growth 5-10%. Uh, the raw material side pressure coming in from higher gas prices and ammonia prices that, is, uh, that has come down so that should help them a bit. Uh, the subsidy issue something something or the other the government keeps doing so uh, that is one uncertainty that keeps happening with the stock. But uh, all said and done they are doing a 200-400 cap crore capex per annum. I think uh, gradually that should uh, aid the growth of around 5-7% to at the top line and bottom line level. So as the mood improves, I think it gets somewhere around 10, 11 times. You could expect uh, 450, 500 on the stock. All right, got that. So that is the complete view on Chambal Fertilizers as well as Lakshmi Organic. With that, Sharad as well as Rajat, I'm going to thank you both for joining us and taking us through all of these individual queries that have come in. We're going to wind down on this show with the news that the market is still over 100 points in the red. 50, uh, 18, 525 is where we're at, slightly off the lows, but you know, it is still a down day, whichever way you cut it. The Nifty Bank currently down over 500 points. Thank you for tuning in. We have Closing Bell up next for the final hour of trade.